Hello, how y'all doing today? My name is Bernie Thompson and today we're here to take a look at this 2010 Jeep Patriot. This little Jeep Patriot has been deemed unfixable. It's gone from shop to shop to shop to shop and its last stop was at the dealership. This car's got a lot of parts put on it. So apparently the problem with this car is, is you can't even drive it, this shop is telling me. He says he tried to drive it and as soon as you accelerate it just dies and sets a crank position sensor code. And so apparently he says that I don't even gotta drive it, all I gotta do is snap the throttle and it will default and we'll get it to die and we'll be able to figure it out. But since I know it's setting crankshaft sensor codes, and the sensor's been replaced twice. They cut the harness and they replaced the connector that goes to the crank position sensor. The dealer just put a new PCM in the car and now the dealer wants to put a whole wiring harness in the car. Now the original shop that brought it to this shop, he usually brings his cars over here to be trouble shot, but this shop told him it was gonna be six months for him to get to the car, so he took it to the dealership. And the dealership has spent a lot of money on this car along with the shop that brought it to this shop. They've got a lot of parts on this car. And it's still broken, guys. So we gotta figure out how we're gonna actually diagnose these cars, not hang parts on them. So the first thing I need is I need a lift. Because since I know the crank sensor is setting codes, I wanna have my scope on the sensor connector so I can figure out what's really happening to this. So I need a lift, so I need to wait here, and he's moving a car off the lift right now so I can get this up in the air and we can get a look at it. Okay guys, I got a lift and we got this Jeep up where I could get to that crank sensor. There's a heat shield across the back of it, so I had to remove the heat shield, but that gave me access to the actual connector. Now for this type of testing, the only acceptable place that you guys can get the signals is right at the connector. Because if you had a connection problem or a wiring problem and you were up in the harness, you may not see it. But you'll see anything that happens as long as I'm right down here at this connector. So I've got the leads in, so let's go ahead and get some signals off of this and see what's going on with this Jeep. Okay, so we got the scope. Let's go ahead and get some data. We're definitely in, so the red is the ground, the green is the power, and the yellow is my signal. And we're into all of them. So we'll come over here and we'll get the data. So is what the shop tells me is when you load the car, you open the throttle wide up, the car will die. Go ahead. Okay guys, there it is, it died, just like the shop said it would. So now let's look at the data here. So this is the crank signal. And this is where it's already dying, so there's nothing wrong there. Look at that strike right there in the five volt signal striking down. That looks like an ignition hit there. And look at the ground getting that strike there again. That looks like an ignition. And he, right here, this looks like a pretty wide opening for the second one. Let's just see. Let's see, I guess maybe that's the way that is. But that seems like that's too wide a tooth right after my gap. I've got ignition strikes all over these powers and grounds on the sensor.
Look at that strike right there. Once again, that's in the sensor signal. You can see it, and it looks like it's also in the 5 volts. So I see that in the 5 volts and the sensor took, and that's a pretty big drop, guys. Like the computer could even maybe count something that far down. The further down these go, the more the computer has a capability of maybe catching that and it gets it confused. So there's something going on there, for sure. Look at that big old drop that happened. These are ignition. This looks like something feeding back into the sensor from the ignition. That's the 5 volt getting hit right there. Another ignition, you can see it in the sensor and the power and the ground. That's where ignition is firing and it's hitting that sensor. Another ignition. Another ignition. Yeah, the ignition is hitting this thing pretty good all over. Another ignition. With that ignition strike there. Here's an ignition strike here. Look at how far down it's blowing the 5 volts. Another ignition strike. So the ignition is hitting this signal all over the place. These seem wide. I don't think they should be that wide after the hit there. But I don't think that's what's causing it. And you can see these ignitions all over these signals. Those ignitions don't seem to be big enough in order to probably count because I'm thinking they're going to count about two to three volts on the edges. I don't see anything yet that's that low in here, but I do see the ignition having a problem. Right here is the problem. Do you see this big space? Let me shut the 5 volts off. Okay, do you see how it went high? Okay, so that signal went high and it stayed high. 
Okay, guys, the computer's job is to put five volts on the signal. The sensor's job is to pull it to ground. So the sensor stopped pulling that signal to ground. But right here, I can see where an ignition also hit the signal right here. You see this blowdown right here. Let's turn this guy back on. So I can see that there. Let's see. I can see where we got some hit, but it's not near as big as some of them. We can see we have a big ignition hit here. That's a pretty big one that came in the 5 volts. So that 5 volts, it's if it hits the 5 volts. Okay guys, there's actual computer type chip silicone inside a crank sensor. Inside a crank sensor, you have a operational amplifier, you have the Hall sensing, and the Hall sensor is the dope type of silicone. And then you have <laughs> it's fine. Go ahead. No, you guys got to make money. No problem. Okay, guys, inside these sensors, there's like chips in here, and there's silicone or, or like computerized type chips. And that has to do with there is an operational amplifier, there's a Hall effect sensor, and that's dope silicone. And then we have we have a operational amplifier, a Smith trigger, and a a transistor that pulls this to ground. Now, if I hit this with a coil strike, it it might knock out the gates. Now I've never seen anything to where I, an ignition can hit a I've never seen where an ignition can hit a signal like this and make ruin the crank sensor and it goes high. But that's what I'm seeing here. That's what the data shows me right now. But I need to get in the ignition and then we need to get in all the ignition coils and see what's really happening. But right now, this is, this is crazy. I've seen a lot of ignition coils that leak and have problems and they hit the computer and they knock the computer off but I've never seen one that doesn't affect the computer but takes the crank sensor down and this is definitely taking the crank, crank sensor and the circuit is pulling it's supposed to pull it to ground well if I spike that circuit it may not be able to pull it to ground anymore and it loses it and as soon as this happens the computer can't keep track of cam and crank and then it's going to have problems with the injectors in the coil because that's how you set crank angle space so this is a real interesting problem it's one I don't know exactly what's happening right now, but I know that these look like I'm getting hits from the ignition. It looks like I'm getting hits from the ignition because I can see it in the ground plane and I can also see it in the power. These are big hits, guys, and if you've got a spike coming in on the power, well then it's going to hit those those chips and those chips have to have stable power, stable current in order for a sensor like this to work. If the coils are leaking somehow and hitting it, that would take it down. Now, they've already replaced the coils, the spark plugs, the computer, the harness that plugs into the crank sensor and they've had several crank sensors on this. This car is supposed to be unfixable. But I don't believe in an unfixable car. That just means that whoever's working on it can't figure it out. That's what unfixable means. But that, this car is not going to be unfixable for us. We're going to get this car fixed. So I'm going to go ahead and move the leads and get them on the coils. Okay guys, I moved my leads around quite a bit. So let me go over exactly how the scope's connected to this vehicle now. Channel 1, yellow, is still the signal. So this is still the signal from the crank sensor. But I move channel 2, red, to cylinder 1. I move channel 3, green, to cylinder 2. I move channel 4, blue, to cylinder 3. I moved channel 5, white, to cylinder 4. 
Now these are in the order that they appear on my scope, so it'll be easier for me to figure out which coil is having a problem. I move channel eight, brown, to the injector for number one. I want an injector. And now I changed this one. I put, this is now going to be my ground. So orange is my ground and purple is my five volts to the sensor. So let's go ahead and get this thing started and let's see if we can't get it to fail. Okay. Okay, there it was guys. It did it. So let's take a look at this. So right away I see right here where the crank signal is failing high, but this is where we're already dying. So that isn't where we want to look. I had something happen right there as well. I guess maybe that's just slowing down the whole crank. So let's, let's take a look at this. We can see these hits coming when we fire the coil. You can see it coming down right here out of the crank pattern. So that's the number four coil right there. Let's look at this. This has got a lean looking kick to it right here. Um, see that that guy's got a kick there too. If I turn it off, I can see that line right there. We can see where it went high right here. And it's right when we fired that coil. That's the number one coil. And you can see the, we can see that downward hit right there in the crank sensor. We can also see it, look at that, that's in the five volt and the ground. Both of those took a pretty good hit right there. When we fired that coil. And we start loading it, it's got a lean look, like it's lean. And you can see right here where we had a lot of energy. The reserve, do you see how the reserve, this is the energy being reabsorbed into the coil. There's a lot there because right here is my, my pull down and I'm going below that. And so this, this took a pretty good hit. It's trying to fire and it's having a hard time firing. And when it has that hard a time, we can see that in everything. You can see that spike all the way through. And then right after this is where we, we see the crank sensor failing and it's failing high. The computer did its job. It has five volts. Okay guys, this has a new computer in it. Now, right now, you know this cannot be the computer. The computer did its job. It put five volts out. Don't put a computer on for this because you're going to waste all that effort and money. It's not going to fix it. The computer sent the signal. The sensor is failing because it's getting hit by ignition spikes. And then the circuit can't work. The ICs inside that crank sensor can't work. 
and it can't pull it down once it takes the hit from the spike. Right here, you can clearly see where that coil, the number one coil right here, hit that signal and knocked it off line and it can't work. Integrated circuits don't like spikes. So now we need to figure out why the ignition is hitting it, but putting a crank sensor on this or a computer or the harness, none of that's going to fix the car. What's going to fix the car is to fix these coils so they stop hitting it. So it looks like these coils have been replaced. I want to look at the coil now. I want to pull them out and I want to see they don't look factory. So I want to take a closer look at the coils and at the plugs and see what's going on to get so much energy kicked. And I still don't quite get how the coil current or the voltage is hitting the crank sensor. I have never seen this problem. And I have seen some crazy, crazy cars. And I've been using a scope since 1980. And I've seen a lot of stuff using scopes on cars. And I've never seen this. I've seen a lot of coils hit computers and knock them, but I've never seen a coil hit a crank sensor and have the crank sensor fail. Okay, we're going to try this again, guys. I want to see, I always like to see things repetitious. I want to see it again. Okay, guys, hold on. I'm going to stop that right there. Look at right here when he was cranking it and it didn't crank, didn't start up. Look at that signal. Look at how it got hit and it went high and it went high and it went high. So let's look over here. We fired the number one coil and right after that coil fired we had a problem. And so let's shut that off. We'll turn that off. Do you see how the 5 volt took a hit here? We took a hit on the, on the ground leg. And this is the injector, or this is the other coil fire here off at 12 volts. Looks pretty lean the way it came up and hit. So we can see, look at how that coil is bleeding over into all these other signals. It hit the 5 volt and the ground, and then that, that sensor could no longer work. It just stays on the whole way. You can see right here where it hit. See over here what happens. Look at that number four. Look at how hard that number four, the white one, hit. Look at the that purple is the five volt reference. That purple, look at that five volt reference get hit. So it totally hits that and it knocks a 5 volt reference and you can see it in the ground too. And then right after we lose the crank triggering mechanism because that went in and hit that circuit and the circuit stopped working. Right here we quit working. Let's just look at the one right before here too. These coils are just got a lot of kick and it's it's hitting all these circuits is what this is. Go ahead and crank it. See if we can't get this to do this again. Okay, there it is. It did it. So now we see that it died over here, but where it started to cut out is over here. So let's just see right there. Do you see where it went high? Let's zoom in on this. We can see it going high and it stayed high. The circuit stopped triggering to ground and as soon as the computer can't see the trigger from the crank, it's going to shut the injectors off. So let's mark this right here. So 
we'll back out here. We're going to turn this other stuff off. Look at right where that was, is right where the injectors got off. And right here we had something happen as well. We can see those injectors shut down, uh, shut off over here. Right there, do you see how that stayed high? And let's, we're going to turn the injector or the coils back on. And right away we can see that that's that number one coil. And look at it, look at it hit the five volt ref, guys. That purple's the five volt ref. When that number one coil hit, do you see how it hit and it knocked the five volts up? Look at the ground getting knocked down. That's when the ignition struck happened right there. And that injector or that coil looks really lean. So this is a really lean hit right here and it created so hard, it's causing so much heart, it's trying to hit it so hard, you can see it actually knock the five volt in the ground. See the five volt in the ground here, right where it fired? That's because it's firing so hard because it's so lean. This is a real lean waveform right here. So we've got some lean waveforms here, and we've got, so it's very interesting. So I want to do something else here. We want to mark this and we want to make sure that those make sure the injectors are still firing here too. So the injector, so that's before, after that is where the injector shut off. But it was still had injection up to that. It's just lean. So maybe we've got lean cylinders. It looks like one and four are the ones that are lean. They're the ones that are hitting this the hardest. So that's pretty interesting. I've never ever seen this problem. I've never seen a coil take down a crank sensor. Now I've seen lots of times where coils hit computers and knock them. And this is just like a computer. It's got gates in it, right? And once again, you can see where we went high here. And if it's high, the computer did its job. It put five volts on the signal, and the sensor's job is to pull it to ground. But when you hit this sensor with high voltage, it, it just stops triggering anymore. It knocks it, it the silicone tack can't take that hit, and it shuts it off. This isn't a problem with the crank trigger, guys. This is a problem with the ignition hitting it. This is really cool. I've just never seen this. Again, you can see where that ignition hit and blew it down. You can see the notch. Now there's something else that's really interesting. Do you see how this circuit is rounding right here on these edges? Well, that rounding front edge is usually from capacitance. And a lot of times when I see a rounding front edge like that, the sensors are failing. Now this is a brand new sensor and this is the second or third brand new sensor. So I'm not sure why it's rounding, but the rounding makes me worried like something just isn't a good sensor. We shouldn't have rounding like that. They should be good sharp edges. And that's definitely is rounding. You can see that round edge. I don't like that. A lot of times when I see that, there's a problem with the sensor itself as well. But I can see the coil hit it and I can see the sensor shut down. So the coils are definitely hitting and we got to figure out how that current is able to get into the crank sensor. This is a very, very unusual problem. Okay, we're going to clear the code. We're going to start the scan tool so it will shut off the scope when it has the problem. We're going to come over here. Go ahead and start it. Okay, the scope stopped. We set the code. We can see the crankshaft sensor malfunction. This is the code that they've been trying to fix for some time. And we can see it break down right over here. 
so we can see it. I can see it break down right there. Do you see how it's failed high? Failed high. Here's the number four coil, and I can see that it knocked the ground down. Let's look at this. So right here we can see where the ground got hit pretty hard when I fired that coil. We now I can also see it in the crank trigger. And look at how big it is off of the top. Look at how big the 5 volt got hit. Look at the 5 volt go up. Look at that ground. All the sensors here, all the sensor signal, power, ground, and signal all got hit when that number 4 coil fired. That, that coil, that energy is getting into the crank sensor and it's what's making the sensor fail. Again, we can go back out, we can see where that all happened. We can see that this fired and then it got stuck high and then we got it again. And this is just knocking the ICs out in the crank sensor to where it can no longer pull the ground. That's all that's going on here and again you can see how big that hit is. And you know IC circuit silicone just doesn't like spikes like this occurring. So that definitely shows that that spike is what's setting this DTC and this DTC is what we're trying to fix. It's what they've been trying to fix for months. Okay guys, this coil here is definitely a new coil and it looks like an aftermarket one. The shop is telling me that you cannot get coils from the dealer, that there's no OE coils available. So I saw when I pulled in, I saw a Chrysler that's got a six cylinder I think in it. I'm going to go see if it's got the same coils and I can take them out of that car to put them in here to just see because I'm not going to be able to get real coils. All I'm going to be able to get is aftermarket. And this is a really unusual problem, so I, I don't want some weird coil. I want to put a, a known good coil in the car. So let me go get those coils out of that car, and then we're going to swap these coils out with those. Okay, I got these two coils from a car that he has here that he's working on. I'm going to borrow them real quick. They're known good. And these are the two brand new coils. This is on one and four. And these are the cylinders that appear to have the worst strikes. And so we're going to change these two first to just see what, we're, what we get. Okay. Right. Yeah. Hang on a second. Rev it. Okay, so we still have a problem, guys. Let's take a look at this. Okay, I can see right here where it's still filled with the new coil. The white one was one of the ones we put in. I didn't put this one in, but I can see that I got a strike off that one right there. But these don't look like they've been replaced, this one, but I can see right there, I can see it getting hit. 
it's in the ground and it's in the signal that when that coil hit that coil hit it and then it did this so the coil is still causing the problem so now I need to figure out how does this current path getting into the sensor somehow I'm I'm getting the current from these coils into the sensor circuit and it's hitting the ICs in that crank sensor and causing this problem so the two coils I put in did not do it maybe I need to look at some of the other coils I need to figure this out okay guys I need to explain how these ignition circuits work because it's not exactly how we might think and I just want to explain this okay the first thing we have here is the ignition coil and this is a step-up transformer in a step-up transformer I have real heavy wire with fewer turns and a small wire with way more turns current goes through this wire and it builds a magnetic field off of this coil and then when the driver turns where well, that's when the driver turns on inside the computer it builds a magnetic field when the driver turns off that magnetic falls field falls back into this wire and so I can get the magnetic field to collapse fast so I get a spark I have a capacitor or what we call a condenser and that gives this real fast moving AC field a plane where it can go to ground so it can dump really quick the current can dump off because if I open that circuit it'll take more time for the magnetic field to fall and then the field doesn't fall fast enough to induce enough energy into the secondary so it goes through this capacitor and that allows the field a very rapid collapse and when that field has a rapid collapse one of the rules is is if I have a magnetic field in motion across a conductor I induct voltage into that conductor so now I'm stepping up this 12 volts and I can step it up to 50,000 volts in this winding now when I get this energy in this winding and it's built to however much 20 50,000 volts it comes down and I have a spark plug and I got the gap and then it's going to jump this gap and go to ground but one of the tricks of these coils is current goes from a negative point of potential to a positive point of potential okay now a long time ago these early experimenters with electricity one of them was Benjamin Franklin and they knew something was coming out of a battery and going back in and he basically had a 50 50 chance to guess what's coming out and going back in so he says that it's coming out the positive post and going back to the negative post the conventional theory of electron flow that we all use today but in reality that's wrong the electrons are going from a negative potential to a positive potential and in most cases it doesn't matter but in this one it does because they wind the coil backwards this is wound backwards so the spark plug threads are positive and the spark plug electrode is negative that means the current is going to come down and go from a negative point of potential the electrode and jump to the ground or what we would call a ground and that's going to give me my spark now by wiring this backwards and having the current go this way I can lower my peak kV by 3 kV and that's a lot of reserve energy so if the plug starts to become worn I still don't misfire so all the coils are wound like this that's why when you guys see coils that are going bad you get a big spike down like off of the injectors I see it and it'll go 100 140 300 volts negative whenever you have large negative spikes on the on the scope and they're 100 200 volts that's a coil strike leaking into the system and that will create havoc on a computer it'll shut them off and give you all kinds of problems now this one isn't exactly leaking but what happens is since I have a large potential that's in the negative leg now wherever the energy was made which means this winding right here that energy has to return to what made it if your energy if your electrical energy came out of the battery it has to return to the battery if the electrical energy was made by the alternator it has to return to the alternator 
Wherever the energy is made, it has to have a return path or you'll have no current. So I have to return to this coil. And the primary and the secondary are linked together. This is referred to as a married coil. And in a married coil, the primary and secondary have a common connector. And that's what this kind of coil is. So once I spark, it goes into the ground, and then it's going to have to go up to this ground, and it's going to have to go back into this coil so it can return to where it started. That's the current path. So I'm pretty sure, so I'm pretty sure what's getting the current into the crank sensor is through its ground. So if I can get energy, high energy into the ground leg and the grounds, it starts to drift up into other grounds, like in this case, the crank sensor ground, it drifts into the crank sensor ground. Now I have a real negative potential current that goes into that gate and it shuts it off and then the crank sensor stops pulling to ground. So what I want to do is I want to clean all the grounds on this system. I want to get all these grounds cleaned up because that energy needs a cleaner path back to its source, the coil. If it, since it's in the ground and we got high energy in the ground and it's got negative potential, if it doesn't have a really clean grounding plane to get back, it can get up into other circuits like the crank sensor. Now that's my belief. I believe that this is my problem. I think it's going through the grounds. Now if you don't understand that these coils are wound backwards, you, not, you might not be looking at what we're going to do correctly. What we're going to need to do is get clean these grounds and make sure all the grounds have a good path back so that current can't leak up into the other grounds in the system like the crank sensor. So that's what's going on guys. So what we're going to do is clean all the grounds on this engine and I've looked them over and there's 10 grounds or more in them that I'm going to get clean. So we're going to clean those grounds up now. Okay guys, I want to clean this ground that comes from the head up to the body. I want to make sure that there's no resistance or anything else in this ground leg. So we're just going to clean these ends up and then we want to clean where it mounts. Clean the nut as well. And we want to clean the head where it's bolted to the head. We want to make sure that the ground path is as good as we can have on this. This needs to make sure we have no resistance in the ground path because I think that that's how that spark can get back into the system. Now I want to take Stabilant 21. This is a contact enhancer. And we want to just put a little on each end of the cable. Make sure we have the best path possible here. Again, a little stable at 21, just to make sure that we got a good path, good contact. This stuff is absolutely amazing to make sure that you have a good contact.
Okay guys, what I did now is I'm going to take this plug, these are brand new plugs, there's one out of the car, and I want to make sure that I got a good connection here, so I'm going to use copper anti-seize. And when you put this on, don't put very much on. I've seen shops put a whole bunch of this on, and if you get it thick, it'll pull out from the vacuum and it'll get on that insulator. And if it gets on this insulator, you have a misfire and no, you won't be able to fix it. So we want just a little bit of anti-seize and we want to just smear it around. Make sure you use copper, don't use the aluminum. We want copper for this. And this definitely will give you a higher discharge. When I did a study for combustion efficiency, this would raise the combustion efficiency. So I know it's going to work. I'm going to clean the threads in the head. We're going to put this back in. I'm trying to make sure that all the grounds have a perfectly good path to ground. So that's what we're going to do to all the plugs. Hey guys, do you see how round this front edge is? It's really rounded and that really bothers me. I don't see it should be a real sharp, nice edge. A lot of times when I see crank sensors rounding like this, it's a capacitance problem and a lot of times that's telling me the crank sensor is having an issue. So now is what I want to do is I want to put a crank sensor in and I want to get rid of this round or try to get rid of this round. So the shop owner checked in with the other shop and this is from Napa. This is a Napa sensor and I really don't like aftermarket sensors. So I guess there's no dealer sensors. So this shop now has found a sensor that is a genuine Mopar part from Whirlpack. So he's ordered the Whirlpack sensor and we're waiting to get it and I'm going to put a, a Mopar sensor in this Jeep so it's a factory sensor. I know this is a new sensor and I know they've had several sensors in here but I know that this isn't right. This rounding edge really bothers me. These should be real nice sharp edges and you can almost see where it's leaning in on that front side with a round. That's just not right. Usually when I see this, something's wrong with the sensor. Okay guys, we got a factory Mopar crank sensor and this came from Whirlpack. The dealer doesn't have any but Whirlpack actually had a Mopar. So we put this factory sensor in the car. Okay guys, we got this Jeep and it's fixed. We've put the number one and number four coils, known good used ones in, and we put a OE Mopar crank sensor in it, and I've cleaned every ground on this engine. There's probably 10 different grounds that I cleaned and put Stabilent 21 on to make sure we have a good connection. Go ahead and floor it. Then we can come over and we can see we're not setting any codes now. And the other thing is, we did a PCM reset to this car because we put a new crank sensor in and it's got to be learned. So you do a PCM reset and then you've got to go drive the car and let it drag down under D-cell so that it can learn the crank variation. So we went and drove it, the car runs great. There's no stalling, missing, or anything else. The car is fixed. Okay, another thing I want to do is come in and I want to look at one of the number four ignition strikes. This has been my biggest problem right here. Now we can see that these strikes are much less. And notice how the negative doesn't have that big downward moving strike. So by cleaning all the grounds, I've gotten rid of that negative going strike and we've got some noise, but the, that's normal. That noise is going to be okay. The car is, is, doesn't have a problem right now. The other thing we can look at is, do you see how I don't have that severe rounding on the top from capacitance? Normally a rounding edge on the leading edge or on the bottom down here, that's capacitance. And a lot of times I've seen where I've gone and looked at cars and they're not having a problem but I see that rounding edge and then I got to go back to the shop when it's gotten worse and the crank sensor has failed. Now rounding edge does not mean the crank sensor is failing but when I see as much rounding as I saw on this sensor it concerns me and when I'm already having a crank sensor problem it concerns me more and then when I find out 
that the crank sensor is some cheap aftermarket sensor. I've had more problems with cam and crank sensors from aftermarket than probably anything I've had on a car. These sensors have to be made by the OE specifications and sometimes the aftermarket companies don't do that. And Jeep has a little bit more noise on the crank sensor from the ignitions than a lot of cars I see anyway. Like a lot of times when I'm looking at these engines, I'll see strikes coming off of the off of the crank sensor and that's normal. I don't freak out on that. But when I have big negative spikes on the ground and on the, the five volt, that gets me more concerned because now that tells me that the current path is getting to the sensor somehow. I've never battled a car like this, so this is a whole new problem for me too. I just haven't seen this. But you can see that it's not rounded. It's, it, there's a little rounding, which is normal, but it's not drastically rounding. So that makes me feel better. Now the other thing is I'm, I'm bashing this aftermarket sensor, but I shouldn't do that. Because this thing's been getting hit by this high voltage from a coil. And it gets punch drunk. After it gets hit and hit and hit, it just stops working. That crank sensor has dope silicone in it. They're ICs, integrated circuits. There's a, the actual Hall effect sensor is doped. The operational amplifier, that's another dope silicone. The Smith trigger is a dope silicone and the transistor is dope silicone. And we all know that integrated circuits, silicone that has impurities added to make it work, they do not do good with negative spikes. It will take them out, it ruins them. So the sensor might have been good in the beginning, but not after, not after it's been hit over and over and you drive one of these things and think about how many thousands of hits that thing is taking. The sensor might have been fine in the beginning, but we had two bad coils and we had bad ground planes. And between those two things, the sensor was getting hit and I think it just got punch drunk. But I always like an OE sensor. And man, it was just great that the shop could actually find a real OE sensor even though they're not available from the dealer. The coils are also not available from the dealer. So this shop went to the junkyard and they acquired two good coils out of a used engine and I believe those are going to be better than some of the aftermarket coils for this car right now. We've got the car fixed and this vehicle is ready to return to the customer and this is one great car. You know I just love working on cars. Every day I come out and it's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Some cars I work on are real duds and then I get one like this man and it's the best piece of chocolate in the box. This is a great car guys. This is a learning experience. I keep coming out and I think I've seen all the crazy stuff. There's no way I've seen all the crazy stuff. I'm going to have another crazy car tomorrow and the next day and the next day. That's why I love being a mechanic. I love doing this work. Because guys, you'll never have the same thing twice. You always have some crazy new problem. And I've been doing this a long time and I've been using a scope since 1980. And I have seen a lot of things on scopes and I've never seen a problem like this. This is a new one and this was a fun car for me. And I had to really stop and think about the theory on how coils fire and how I might be able to get the current path into this crank sensor and not into anything else. Very interesting problem. It is a great car. Okay guys, we know that this vehicle has some lean cylinders. We've seen it over and over on the scope. And the car's ready to return, but we don't want this car coming back with a check engine light for a misfire because of these lean cylinders. So I'm going to treat this car with 505 CRF. This is carbon remover fuel. Now this stuff is amazing. This is like nothing else that's on the market. It's patent pending technology and this chemical is in no other chemistry. This dissolves carbon. This isn't like all the other pour-ins that are amine based or polyether amines. That's what they make epoxies out of. This is eight years in the making. This is some really high-tech stuff. 
that really will dissolve the carbon. This is like no other product. If you want to make sure, if you want to make sure that your the cars aren't going to come back and you really do clean the injectors, this is the correct product to use. Okay guys, is that one crazy Jeep Patriot or what? This is one crazy car. It's all fixed and it's ready to be delivered back to the shop that brought it here. So, you know, what I want you guys to take away from this video is just because you took a part out of a cardboard box and put it on and it's new does not mean that it's, that's a good part. Many times the shops I go work for, they've put a new part on out of a cardboard box and so that's eliminated. It's not that because I put that, that's new, so it eliminated it. But a lot of times that is the problem. You just put more problems into the car you're already trying to fix with new parts. Really, we need to start using scopes and get a better idea how to fix it. I mean, let's look at this car. This car has a new crank sensor in it. The pigtail from the crank sensor has been cut and spliced into the harness. It's got a new PCM. The coils and plugs were replaced. And I don't even know what else, but at least those, I can see all that done. There's probably been more. And the dealer wanted to put the entire harness on the car. Now man, would that have been a bad day for that tech to put the harness on? Because he'd have started it up and it still would have had a problem because we have bad coils. Wow, that would have been a bad day. You know, that's like a, not a rut row, that's a double rut row day. Let's not have double rut row days. Let's diagnose stuff, guys. You guys have a great day.